Here were the top 10 rookie wide receivers being drafted back in May, according to our ADP. I think we did a really good job on the top five as a group, and they have all been widely discussed on this channel. But I think the more interesting discussions can be found from this wide receiver six to wide receiver 10 group. So let's dive in. It has been a tough road for our beloved Sky Moore, who, according to Ryan McDowell, is one of four of the top 20 rookies drafted in September who has lost value and has lost actually the second most value among rookie wide receivers. But rightfully so. I mean, Moore only has 28 targets on the season, 18 receptions, 212 yards, and he's played every game. He's just not making a mark in this receiving core. You may have heard the term face planner in regards to rookie receivers who failed to really do anything their first year, and history is not kind to face planting rookies. As you can see, there's a long list of rookies who failed to produce in year one, lost dynasty value, and were never heard from again. Of course, there are always exceptions, but 11 out of over 120 players those aren't really the odds that I'm looking for. The good news is that the Dynasty community still believes in Sky Moore, so you can pivot off of him for a better player with relative ease. He's currently the wide receiver 45 in December ADP, taken directly behind guys like Rashad Bateman, Elijah Moore, Jahan Dodson, all guys that I would love to add even a second with Sky Moore to go and get. Or look behind Sky and you see players like Rondell Moore, Josh Palmer, Darnell Mooney, Michael Gallup. Again, all guys that I would prefer over Sky Moore. I'm not dropping him in any of my dynasty leagues, but I am actively trying to pivot off of him now at this value. Now I'm gonna preface this next guy by saying that I was and still am basically completely out on Christian Watson. I've seen his fantasy production over the last month, but I still have issues. Number one, his fantasy production has come largely on the back of touchdowns. He has seven receiving touchdowns in four games. To make that worse, he's done that on lower target volume, seven touchdowns on 27 targets. That is insane efficiency. Don't get me wrong, touchdowns are great for fantasy, but not when they are coming at an unsustainable clip. Number two, he is still being overshadowed by the other rookie wide receiver on his team. Look at his splits with and without Romeo Dobbs this season. Do you think it's a coincidence that Watson began producing the second Dobbs got hurt, then had his worst game over the past month, the second Dobbs returned to the lineup? And then three, what happens if slash when Aaron Rodgers retires at the end of the season? Are we trusting? Watson with Jordan Love? Is it a free agent quarterback who's new to this offense or is it a later drafted rookie? His situation post Aaron Rodgers is very murky for a receiver that we're not even sure is much more than a Gabe Davis or a Chase Claypool type. But you can see the tantalizing upside, the big play explosiveness, the red zone usage and touchdowns. If he's earned the trust of Aaron Rodgers and Aaron Rodgers does stay, he could be a dangerous weapon and great asset for fantasy. However, I'm sticking with my pre-draft analysis as I haven't seen enough to make me change my stance on Watson given how he's producing, when he's producing, and can he continue producing in that way? He's a huge sell high for me if people are viewing him as a dynasty wide receiver too, and you can easily pivot off of him to guys like Chris Godwin, Devonta Smith, Michael Pittman, or even Hollywood Brown. Now, the rookie I was advising to draft over Christian Watson during the summer was Jahan Dotson. And again, let me preface this by saying that I am a Penn State fan and alum, so maybe there's some bias here, but look at what Watson has done this season too, because across the board, his per game numbers are almost identical to Christian Watson's. Targets per game, yards per game, even touchdown percentage, they're all basically the same. Yet December Dynasty ADP has Christian Watson at wide receiver 28 and Jahan Dotson all the way down at wide receiver 41, all because of recency bias. We just lived through the Christian Watson breakout, but we forget that Dotson had that same type of breakout at the beginning of the year for three games, got hurt, then came back, and now has had two great games in a row again. Call me crazy, but out of everything that I've seen from both Dotson and Watson, I would still prefer Jahan Dotson. He's a full year younger as Watson is about to turn 24, Jahan Dotson 23. Dotson was the better prospect. He had better college production at not just an FBS school overall, but a Big Ten school and was drafted higher as a first round pick. I hated on Watson's touchdown production and while Dotson's is basically the same, there's a difference between catching touchdowns from Aaron Rodgers and catching touchdowns from Carson Wentz and Taylor Heineke. Plus, Watson did all of his damage without Romeo Dobbs, while Dotson has been doing it with both Terry McLaurin and Curtis Samuel on the field. Even if he would still take Christian Watson over Jahan Dotson, at the very least, you have to admit that they're very similar and there should not be a massive difference in price between the two for Dynasty, like December ADP suggests. So if you like Watson, 
then just go get Jahan Dotson at a much cheaper price. But all right, we need to talk about this next player because I have never seen a bigger disconnect between production and value in recent history as I have with George Pickens. Let's play a game here for a second. I'm gonna give you five seconds to guess the correct order of these five players based on their 2022 fantasy points per game. Go ahead, order these in your head. Now you could probably guess just by my tone that this was a trick question because Pickens is the last of this group and the only player not averaging double digit fantasy points this season. In fact, Pickens has just one game over 11 PPR points over the last seven weeks. I feel like I can finally clap back at film people and say, stop looking at the tape and just actually look at the boss scores for once. He hasn't seen over six targets in a game since week five. He has one game with more than three receptions since week eight. He hasn't played over 80% of snaps since week 11. And this is all basically since the Chase Claypool trade, which made Pickens the for sure, without a doubt, wide receiver two in this offense. And yet, he hasn't really been a part of this offense. He makes one amazing catch every single week, but that one catch is basically like half of his production for that game. And the worst part out of all of this is when does anything change positively for George Pickens. The Steelers are playing themselves out of a top 10 pick and they are a blocked field goal away from winning four games in a row without Pickens really being a part of this offense. Pickett is going to be their quarterback again next year. So does Kenny Pickett improve or is he another Zach Wilson, another Sam Darnold? Deontay Johnson is there for two more years as their wide receiver one, soaking up 150 targets a season. So what changes for George Pickens in a positive manner for fantasy? I'm having a really hard time reconciling Pickens being the rookie wide receiver four in DLF ADP, valued above Burks, Williams, Watson, and Dotson, plus other veterans like Michael Pittman, DJ Moore, Devonta Smith, even his own teammate, Deontay Johnson, who is out producing him week in and week out. He has to be the most overvalued player in the 2022 class right now, and I would be actively trying to sell high on the name value of George Pickens before people actually start looking at just the box scores here. So those are the most interesting names left of this 2022 class. Let me just quickly run through wide receiver 10 through 20 and give a five second take on what to do with each of them. So John Mechie, stash and hold. I'm still very interested in what he can do as a second round pick. Hopefully he comes back because cancer. David Bell, stash, although I'm really starting to lose hope in what he can become. Alec Pierce, stash, maybe Nico Collins 2.0 with a better quarterback next year. Wando Robinson, also a stash and actively actually buying at any injury discounts out there. Jalen Tolbert, cut, goodbye. Bailey Jones, why is he still on your roster? Cut. Taekwon Thornton, cut. Khalil Shakir, cut. Romeo Dobbs, holding, if not buying at any discounts. And then Calvin Austin, Justin Ross, Danny Gray, Kyle Phillips, any other rookie wide receivers at the bottom of the barrel here. These guys are all cuts. Don't waste a roster spot on any of these guys. So that was a breakdown on rookie wide receivers six through 20-ish from May ADP. But like I said at the beginning, the top five are all shaping up to be hits in some capacity. But if you want a more detailed breakdown on each of them individually, check out this video right up here.